Santa Barbara, California is next. Good morning on the Democrats line. Good morning, um, Mr. Greenwald. Uh, I spoke with you briefly about two years ago at the uh, blogger convention in Chicago, and uh, I spoke to you about a particular issue, and there's been some recent developments, and so um, I just wanted to update you on that because uh, it actually uh, connects directly to Congress and Congress's policy failures in regards to drugs, media, um, banking, uh, just, you know, the special interests that control Congress. Um, and that is the uh, convention clause of Article 5 of the Constitution. Um, the national group Friends of the Article 5 Convention have put together a database for the first time in American history that showed there are over 700 applications on the Senate and House congressional records. Um, requesting a uh, convention, and um, recently there was a report out of Missouri about the militia movement in America, and that report says, and also Ohio, the uh, state legislator, state legislature in Ohio is under the impression also that we are 32 state applications towards a national convention, and so I guess. You know, I just want to ask you, you know, if you can, sometime in the near future, um, maybe discuss, you know, us holding a national convention and simply on the grounds of the rule of law, which is that once those applications go on record, Congress has to issue the call. You know, it's interesting. I, I practice constitutional law for... Uh, many years before becoming a political writer and so I have always been in the past rather resistant to the idea that the Constitution needs some sort of uh, radical re-examination. Um, I think the founders with some exceptions got the Constitution basically right and the safeguards in it are extremely important um, and the problem is not that we don't have the right Constitution in place the problem is that our Constitution is routinely trampled upon and violated and uh, we don't do anything about that. Having said that uh, I do think that there are some radical and, and fundamental problems within our political system uh, that very well might uh, warrant a, a reconsideration of at least some of the structures within the Constitution uh, to determine whether or not the Constitution, which at its core was designed to place limits on the power of the political class, um, needs to be supplemented and, and strengthened uh, in order to limit what, what is the out-of-control uh, corruption that, that permeates our, our elites. The Twitters are coming in. Excellent. Twitter at Wash Journal. So if you want to do so, uh, we welcome your participation. One comment, Mr. Greenwald, what is the solution to his position that Simon Johnson is correct and that financial elites have control of government? Well, I, I think that, um, I mean, James Madison talked about the fact that um, what is necessary is that the government fears the citizenry and not the other way around that the citizenry fears the government. Um, and as I said, the reason why there's pillaging taking place on the part of financial elites is because they think that there are no consequences for them to do that. And thus far, that's been true. I think Americans are now starting to wake up and realizing that everything that they hold as important, um, namely their financial security, uh, their ability to own a home, their ability to send their children to college, to have just a, a, a uh, mildly um, respectable standard of li life, um, is being now threatened by this cooperative corruption on the part of uh, Wall Street and, and Washington. Um, and there's anger, and the anger is growing, and it will continue to grow um, until that corruption is checked. There, I wish I could say that the safeguards that the founders put into place to serve as checks on uh, what our political elites could do uh, would be working, but we've seen in the past eight years that the Congress and, and the media um, are, are uniquely um, inept at this point or, or even unwilling to impose those checks. They participate in, in much of what takes place, and so I think the ultimate check will be uh, the citizens standing up and, and refusing to tolerate it any longer. Another tweet came up with that term but anyhow Glenn talent is limited and the best are being pulled from the same colleges what would you have us do um, I'm not sure I understand entirely the I think part of the essence is it's a small group of school schools whether it's Harvard Princeton Yale that we're pulling from these schools well you know I think that um, when you look at the president's cabinet right it's yeah, mostly you, Ivy League yeah th 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 that's true although the last administration um, although the president was uh, a graduate of Yale, um, sort of specialized in um, filling 
positions uh, high up in the Justice Department and elsewhere with graduates of Liberty College and Pat, Pat Robertson's Regent uh, schools in order to ensure ideological adherence to the president's agenda. And, and there are members of the establishment who don't grow up as being that. Um, but I think that the culture of Washington and of Wall Street is so consuming and so intense um, that no matter where you come from, once you arrive, uh, there is a corrupting influence uh, that is very potent. And unless you're willfully resisting it, I think it ends up transforming even well intended people who end up being uh, essentially um, annexed by by that culture and so I don't think the problem is so much where do the people come from who fill these positions I think the problem is what is it that they do once they fill them our next call from Houston good morning with Glenn Greenwald and tell the dog to go outside go ahead caller <laughs> you with hello us? good morning good morning thank you for speaking out about corruption I think we have a legalized bribe system in America with the lobbyists, and we should not allow any group money to be contributed to campaigns. Individual contributions only from tax, I'm sorry, from registered voters with uh, total transparency. Uh, this group money is it's destroying our nation. Caller, one of the uh, tweets that we got, and this is directed to Mr. Greenwald, saying that we should begin boycotting major campaign contributors, he says to the Republican Party, and demand legislation of them. We had a case go before the Supreme Court where corporations were not allowed to give campaign contributions. They came up with the lobby system, which is basically the same thing. I think what we need is the Supreme Court of the United States to disallow any groups to organize, pull their money together, and give their money as campaign contributions. They can organize and give their ideas. They can have free speech. Uh, but this money thing is a legalized bribe system. They're just buying votes. And um, then we sit home and wonder why everything's in such a mess. Uh, she's exactly right. It is legalized bribery that is the fuel that drives the city in which we're sitting, which is Washington. I'll just give you one quick example. Last year, um, numerous Americans um, brought suit against the, their telecommunications companies, uh, AT&T, Verizon, and the like, um, because those companies broke the law by turning over to the Bush administration access to the telephone calls of their customers without having to first obtain warrants as the law required. They broke the law in, in numerous ways. And they were sued by their um, customers uh, for breaking the law and violating their rights. Um, and those uh, telecommunications companies hired the most expensive lobbyists in Washington, former Bush and, and Clinton administration officials, who called their friends in Congress um, and got paid huge amounts of money to do it, and continuously pressured and cajoled members of Congress of both parties uh, to write a law that had no purpose other than to uh, immunize those telecommunications companies from the lawsuits that had been brought against them. I mean, if ordinary Americans are sued for breaking the law or for violating rights, no member of Congress writes the law immunizing them, uh, but because these telecommunications companies have um, scores and armies of lobbyists and pour huge amounts of money into the campaign coffers, they poured enormous amounts of money into uh, the campaign coffer, for example, of Jay Rockefeller, who was a member of the Senate Intelligence Committee, and he then became the leading proponent, a Democrat, um, of writing a bill to immunize the same people who were um, pouring money into his campaign, and, and the Congress got together and passed a law to immunize um, the telecom company that flood Washington with money. I mean, it's pure corruption in its most transparent form, um, and yet the caller is right, it's legalized. The problem is, is that the First Amendment does guarantee the right of, of, of petitioning the government and, and freedom of speech, and spending money to petition your government representatives is, is a right that even corporations have. So I think the solution um, is, as the caller suggested, for greater transparency in this process, and, and again, for citizens to remove from office, uh, whether Democrat or Republican, members of Congress who get here and write laws that are designed to uh, benefit their corporate donors and, and laws that are actually written by lobbyists on behalf of those donors.